extraordinary young man who really stepped up to the plate when Mr. Honeycutt went off to the war. Everybody welcome Junior Bledside. Hey, Junior, would you introduce yourself a little bit to our... Well, yes, ma'am, I would. I'm Junior Bledside. Mama and I have lived beside the Honeycutts for as long as I can remember. They were always there for us, especially after Daddy died. Oh, well, it's so nice to meet you, Junior, and we're really happy to have you. Could you tell us a little bit about why you went with the family to send off Mr. Honeycutt at the train station? Well, ma'am, you see, Mr. Honeycutt lets me borrow his truck from time to time. Seeing as I got my license and all, Miss Honeycutt never got her license. So Mr. Honeycutt asked if I'd go ride with him to the train station so that the girls and Bobby could have a ride home. Oh, okay. I see now. Well, once Mr. Honeycutt left for the war, how did your relationship with the Honeycutts kind of change? Well, Mr. Honeycutt asked me to keep an eye on the girls and Bobby while he was gone. And Faye was supposed to fulfill the overalls and be the man of the house. My job was to make sure they had all they needed. You know, help in the fields, fix things like that. Since I'm the only one that had a license, Mr. Honeycutt gave me his truck so I could use while he was gone. I had to promise to take them girls, Bobby, and his wife, Miss Honeycutt, anywhere they needed to go. Oh, wow. Mr. Honeycutt gave you quite the job. Now, I know that Bobby got sick at some point. Can you tell us about when Bobby got sick? Well, Ann Faye had all the youngins working in the garden. You see, Bobby wanted to play and didn't want to help any. Ann Faye kept after him until he pulled his part. That's when he got sick. Ann, play, Ann Faye blamed herself and said she had worked Bobby too hard and caused him to get the polio. She shamed him into working and he ended up really getting sick. I don't think they'll ever forget seeing the hearse pick him up and take him to the hospital. The epidemic was so bad they had to use hearses instead of ambulance. I'm sure that was a terrible, terrible sight. You know, the polio is so bad. But once Bobby was at the hospital, I understand that Miss Honeycutt stayed with him. Um, and Aunt Faye stayed at home and took care of the girls. Can you kind of tell us about when you took Aunt Faye, Ellie, and Ida to visit their mama? I'm going to tell you that was a task. <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to help, but just something about telling Ann Faye no, you can't do it. Ann Faye asked me to take them to see their mama, and against my better thinking, I just couldn't stand to see those girls missing their mama anymore. So I gave in, and I took them. When we got there, it wasn't smooth sailing. Ann Faye had brought some stuff from the garden to give to her mama. The guard working wouldn't let us in. He would only let me bring in the food. He said the girls were too young to go in, but Ann Faye wouldn't have it. So I drove around to the back of a big, of, drove around back, dumped out Ann Faye and the twins. There were a lot of pine trees, so the girls climbed up the hill, waited for me to give them the old Bob White call, you know, a special call Ann Faye and I had to communicate with each other. They climbed up to the top of the hill Ann Faye caught a glimpse of her mama, and that was it. The twins and Ann Faye couldn't help themselves, so they took off running to their mama just as quick as they could. Miss Honeycutt looked pleased as ever, but was really concerned that the girls were going to get in trouble. After a few short minutes of catching up, we were sent off without getting to see Bobby. I really think those girls and Miss Honeycutt were glad to see each other. You know, we even got to see old polio Pete. He had followed Bobby all the way to the hospital. That is a sight to be seen. Wow, well, I'm so glad that those girls got to see their mama. I know they missed her. Now, I know Bobby didn't make it. The iron lung just wasn't strong enough to keep him going. Can you tell us a little bit about when Bobby got to come home? Well, when they brought Bobby home, it was a really sad time. Some of the family come back, but we were devastated, especially Ann Faye's mama. She was in her own little world just lost. They didn't have no money to really have a funeral. The preacher come by and was going to say some words. We had to dig down our own ditch, a grave site, and we was just worried about how was we going to bury him. He was just laying there wrapped up in a quilt that his grandma had made. So 
Ann Faye knew where some wood was that her daddy had saved up for a doghouse. And uh, I just had to help her clean it. We had to build Bobby a box that just seemed right. So we kind of all pulled together and had Bobby a funeral. Yeah, so sweet. I know those were bitter times, bittersweet times. Um, now, I understand once Bobby had passed, life was really hard at the Honey Cat home place. And uh and Faye came up with the idea that it'd be good for Ellie and Ida to get out and go see their grandparents. Can you kind of tell us about that trip? Well, yeah, well, after the funeral, you know, like you said, it was a it was a hard times, especially on Ann Faye's mama. She um had a problem with the, just distancing herself and not being there for the kids. So Ann Faye said, you know, let's go see the grandparents. Against my better judgment, once again, <laughs> I couldn't say no to Ann Faye. Those girls just had you wrapped. Yep. So we decided that a good plan would be to hide them in the back of the truck because we couldn't take any youngins across the state lines, and they lived in South Carolina. Yep. So I hauled up the truck. We got a few biscuits, a few root beers, and some jam, piled them in the back of the truck with some blankets, and put some hay bales to cover them up so it looked like we were just transporting some hay. But it didn't do for them youngins to drink all the root beer five minutes into the trip. They had to pull over, and they had to use the bathroom. So they went out in the woods, and sure enough, here come the polos, asking me and poking and gouging, wanting to know what was going on. And I knew sure enough if he moved all them hay bales and seen biscuits and drink cans laying there in the bed of the truck, I was done for. But to my great surprise, he knew that I was just transporting some hay and let me go on, but I had to drive around and drive around for hours while them poor youngins just sat in the woods, and eventually I made it back to them. I appreciate that. I'm so glad they, they got there safely. Now, I, I know that Aunt Faye also got sick with um, the end of our story and uh, had to go to like her, she was admitted to the hospital. Did life change at the Honeycutt home place when Aunt Faye was gone? I know she kind of had to glue that whole thing together. Uh, well, yes, ma'am, it did. Uh, she uh, was doing a lot there, and the mama was devastated and not doing nothing back at the house after Bobby had passed away. But this was a real big wake-up call for her mama because she realized, you know, the shock of losing Bobby, she had not been there for the other youngins. And she was possibly going to lose Ann Faye and not been there to do anything for her. So when Ann Faye went to the hospital, her mama wanted to go with her just like she did Bobby, but it wasn't possible to do. But um, without Ann Faye being there and the two young girls just not being able to do much, there was a lot of stuff going on towards the end of the gardening season. So I tried my best between my house and Ann Faye's house to keep up with the garden and trying to go by every day and taking her mom to visit when we could. That's good. I know that they were really thankful for you. Now, uh, I know Aunt Faye's ending to her sickness was a little different than Bobby's and a little bit sweeter. So when Aunt Faye came home, can you kind of tell us about that a little bit? Well, that was one of the happiest times of my life. You know, me and Aunt Faye, we always seemed like we butted heads a lot, but, you know, I really loved them girls. And, um, I didn't know if she was going to make it home, and I never got to go to the hospital to visit her. Never even really got any letters that much. You know, most of it was wrote to her mama, which I understand that. But um, she even told me when she got home she was really, you know, wanting to see me as much as anybody else. And um, we actually, you know, did the Bob White call, reminisced, and she looked a little scrawny, so I was worried about her. But, um, you know, I told her there was a lot to do in the fields, and she needed to eat cook some food and uh, we went back out there and cranked up that old tiller and she got right back to work. Well that is awesome. Well thank you so much Junior for being with us today and sharing your experience with the Honeycutt. We really appreciate you coming. Thank you ma'am. I hope you have time to share